Triple KO! What's up, dudes, and welcome back to Triple KO. My name's Max. I'm joined over here by Matt and Justin. Once again, as we're going to be chatting the history, future, and future's future of fighting games, and also history's history. Uh, and we're going to be tackling brave and bold topics today. Absolutely drama-filled that will be the <laughs> likes to anger the masses. Oh, yes. uh, and it's going to be a uh, musical preference. Uh, it's a weird one because obviously in the format we have, we can't just like fire up music cues and, you know, even in video Who format for the show. Who says we can't? We can, we can <laughs> like, hey! Like we can, you know, proper just... Beats for beats in yeah, my head. You have, to, you have to sing like a part of the song and then also convince us why it's good um, in your version. So I, I, uh, I think we could hum, hum can, along yes. every so often. I think that's acceptable. And I think uh, it should be it should be fun to sort of look back at the music of fighting games because it's something that is obviously so obviously uh, important to the modern day fighting game, but something that I don't think many of us in the 90s really realized like is a substantial thing. In fact, there's like very few times I could recall like the music in this game is amazing. And I, I feel like it's just I didn't have that that perception yet of just games in mm. general that this music is changing my life and i don't even know it like <laughs> type of stuff yeah uh yeah, yeah, yeah and I, yeah. I think yeah. i think the best way to start is like obviously like street fighter 2 is incredible but for all of you guys personally uh and starting with matt when was the first time you even like recognized the music in a fighting game and identified that this shit is dope like this is this is going to be something I will listen to the rest of like the rest of my life type stuff. Like I can make love to this music. Yeah, right? stuff like yeah. that. Um, yeah, that would be the Mortal Kombat one. Select your fighter. Like I that I remember like because it was mostly renting games because in an arcade you can barely ever hear the music right so that was discounted from me for a while. Like I didn't even know soul caliber had great music until I rented the dreamcast version. Right. Mm -hmm. Couldn't hear it in the arcade, but yeah, actually mortal Kombat one select screen music. I remember on the super Nintendo being like, Oh, that's just really, that just really like authentic feeling to the, the game subject material. And yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of groovy, but another one weighs a street fighter one. And it's specifically DJ stage. When I would rent super street fighter two, um, I would just, think that that rhythm i mean it makes sense it's dj i just think that really stood out for me like i think at that point like all of the classic themes like ryu ken guile um you know i'd heard enough that it kind of didn't register anymore but at that point when i heard new tracks uh, and even fei long's track was like very different feeling to a lot of the other new challenges and and the game in general and i think it was like really super street fighter where the new challengers music didn't make a bigger impression on me than the classic themes. And after that, it would go like Tekken. Well, we'll get there, but Tekken yeah. 3 is, is obviously a very big one. And a little game called Killer Instinct. I, Instinct. I can say it right sometimes. How about how about you, Justin? Is there like a big moment that you can identify where you're like, even as even as like a youngin between I I because me I don't think it Baby happened to Justin. me until I was like twelve or thirteen. It, is there like a damn. moment where you're like, damn, this shit is sick? So I feel like since we grew up in the arcades, it's really hard to hear a lot of things, right? Yeah, this is a good point. Um, right so arcades you hear so many different like kind of noises attacks mainly attacks before music than anything right or like mm. even like the even the pac-man machines are like super loud mm. uh but i think when i came to realize um how much i appreciated like music from like x Mario street fighter marl super versus street fighter and mars capcom one um i did not notice it in the beginning when i played the game because all i kept thinking about was combos 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 high scores high scores high scores until I play, I, I actually noticed it until I played Marvel's Capcom 2. And I'm like, bro, I actually hate the music yeah. in Marvel versus Capcom 2. Like, take you for a <laughs> ride, and every character does not have their own theme. It was like a stage theme. It just like drive me insane. So, like, you know how, like, in like the older, like, 2v2 fighting games every time a character dies a character comes in they play their music um, yeah the, the music just changes so marvel 2 didn't have that and i and i realized that i'm like bro the music here sucks so then after that i really uh, started listening to more of like stuff from x-men street fighter uh marvel superheroes uh marvel super street fighter I marvel Capcom one and that's when i'm like 
man, Captain America Steve, that is a banger. Captain yeah. America Steve is like so beautiful. Um, and then it, it, it makes me start to appreciate like other stuff from like like uh, Street Fighter 2, like Matt said, uh, even Street Fighter 3, Third Strike, Second Impact, uh, the Alpha, the like even with the announcers are so cool and everything like that. Like Mars Capcom 2 really showed me the light that like yeah, there's music is actually very sick in these older games, but damn, Mars Capcom 2 sucked with the music. So that's an interesting take because your perspective sure is. is that you don't have any individual identifying moments of the God, this music is dope. It would take until where the hell's the music? Like the perspective <laughs> yeah. to change where it suddenly is now missing and something has changed to realize like, Where's my, what's going on? And then you go back to the old ones and you realize how good the old ones are. And then you, now you have, you know, you know, you get Marvel <laughs> 2 jazz themes. And that, and, and that is actually an echoing statement. Like they, and, and when that game came to arcades, much less we had it on Dreamcast, the, the stark difference in musical tone, in audio tone in Marvel 2 compared to every other Capcom fighting game, much less most fighting games at the time, was so different that nobody, people were like, what the hell? People called it elevator music, is what everyone yeah, called it. Yeah, it's terrible, it's terrible. Nobody liked it. It has absolutely found its way uh, into people's hearts nowadays because it is so weird and different. But that mentality of like, yeah, until it's gone, you don't realize how great something is until it's suddenly different, you know? And that's yep. that's like an interesting take where you go back and you realize, God, dude, listen to the character select theme in X-Men versus Street Fighter. Like, holy shit, I'm hyped as fuck listening to this, you know? <laughs> um, it, 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 it's also a little bit of of whenever lyrics are thrown in to, to, to fighting game stuff, it was weird because so few fighting games did it. So it would, would definitely take some getting used to, mm -hmm. especially like late era, like, yeah, Marvel versus Capcom two, or even, um, uh, Capcom versus SNK two. I mean, but for killer instinct, which maybe might've been the first soundtrack in the arcade that had a lot of vocals. Uh, again, even as loud as the machine was, you couldn't, you know, make it out or they're the, the announcer is too busy screaming at you anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you couldn't like listen to the subtleties. That's why so many people identify with that, with that CD yeah. that was bundled in with KI super intense. You can actually listen to it. And I didn't even have a CD player for like the first year or two that I owned that game. It's only when we got a computer with a CD ROM drive where I was mm. able to put it in. Right. So Max is talking about identifying music. So I'd pop that CD in, they'd play like Orchid's theme and my parents are, are, are sitting around and I, I play that and it gets to the part where it's like, touch me, <laughs> feel me, feel me. I thought She's a killer. I thought, I thought it was much more direct. It was like, fill me. I'm like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Sorry, mom and dad. Was, Hold on. Um, don't and throw they the were CD like, out the window. I don't remember exactly what they said, but they're like, w w what is this? What are, what are you playing on the computer? <laughs> I'm like, it's just music, mom. They're like, oh, okay. And that and uh, another it was another um well kind of like a cd thing where when i'd get virtual fighter remix on the pc and you can listen you to the just, music yeah you could just play yeah. it off the music and that's when i really fell in love with virtual fighter music specifically because that was that was like a big moment too because i could just hear it clearly in my house and it's cd quality not like you know bit crush super nintendo stuff yeah. or, or whatever as good as that can still be but Virtual Fighter was like, holy shit, I love Virtual Fighter music. And then that kind of apex of Virtual Fighter 3, I would start downloading the MP3s of that on whatever service From was Wire. available. Yeah, on LimeWire. LimeWire. And I love like Jackie's track, uh, Jeffrey's specifically as well. And that then that fed it. That was a gateway drug into Tekken and Toshinden music. Because Toshinden, as not amazing of a game as it is, a, a very underrated banger soundtrack. It's very Sega esque, the Toshin Den soundtrack for whatever reason. Obviously, take but, a Virtua Fighter, you know, Virtua Fighter yeah. uh, like preference when they were making it. Uh, that, that's a that's a really good point uh, re regarding that that an entire time frame. How you have all these tracks and all these like games that have all these music files because we are changing from the 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 what's it called the cartridge format to the CD format and mm -hmm. i completely forgot cuz playstation 1 games i don't think did that they had the black backed discs that didn't work in a cd yeah. player but saturn games did so there was mm. a handful of saturn games you just chuck them into a cd player and they would just play the music of the game 
It was really cool. And I think if you had a PC uh, version of a, like, I think if you put Virtual Fighter into CD player, it might play the tracks. I have a memory of that, but some, some PC games certainly did that. I don't know how many fighting games mm-hmm. were released on PC on, on CD, like probably a handful at this point. But uh, yeah, like that was, that was a, that was a big thing for me having, being able to listen to the music whenever you wanted rather than boot up the game Yes, I think I mentioned this before, but I did record Toshin Den yeah. onto tape. Right, we, we, yeah. have to, we, have to, we have to talk about those moments again. Uh, of, <laughs> yes, me of and Matt have a similar sort of experience with that. But but Matt McMuscles here, everybody that's listening, is right. Killer Instinct is the the finite 90s definitive musical experience. Hate to break it to you, but Killer Instinct wins again. <laughs> and this was like the first time that I actually remember the music for this is amazing uh and i think it's because it came with a cd it came with something at the time you know 1995 that was quote unquote exotic exotic and futuristic and you know all this stuff and i i think we had just gotten a new uh like four by four and it came with a CD player. And then that, and that CD player, they had like a demo CD that just had a bunch of music like Indiana Jones and top 90s hits and the highway to the danger zone and all this stuff. So we would just listen to that <laughs> all the time. And then we would put in, uh, I'd put in the Killer Instinct soundtrack into that car like constantly. So nice. yeah, I, I definitely remember K.I., 100 percent being like the music in this is so cool and i i do remember the first time even playing it in arcades actually hearing vocals in the audio tracks like orchid's theme is is a big one because the Mm -hmm. the arcade tracks are significantly more uh they're completely different cuts of the music the the ones you get on the ki killer cut soundtrack are actually the full remixes that robin bielan and Graham margate did um but you can still hear the fact that this sounds amazing like oh my god And that is actually, by design, uh, Killer Instinct was one of the first arcade games that had a hard drive, and they had enough dedicated space to actually have CD-quality audio. And they specifically Mm -hmm. did that for that game. Music was always, like, a huge priority for KI number one. And the same thing actually goes for the Super Nintendo, trying to get all that stuff crammed on that little cartridge was was crazy difficult, from what I understand. So Uh, I like how they're like, well, we're not going to get the full, like, impact of the song in the game, but you're going to get it with this CD at least because I I would always like who, who, do you know anybody that might know whose marketing decision that was? Did it come from Nintendo? Was it a suggestion from Rare? Have you ever heard anything from that? I was very lucky at at E3 20, jeez, either 2013 or 2014. Mm. Um, I had a private dinner with Robin Beanland, uh, me and Simmons did, and we essentially, and I'm not going to talk about everything because he just gave us the lowdown on rare and Microsoft and everything around that time frame and all this crazy stuff. But we extensively got to talk about killer instinct, like music, uh, cause he was the initial composer of KI one and two next to Graham Norgate. Uh, and they were like the main audio guys at rare, uh, next to, uh, who's Mr. Captain Donkey Kong. Um, Captain David Wise. <laughs> uh, so yeah, David still still did Donkey Kong music like to this day, or at least back when Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze and stuff. So mm-hmm. we we just got to talk to him about it, and and yeah, he did echo the fact that I I think getting a CD pack in was done through possibly uh, Ken Lobb. I think Ken was like kind of the spearhead Nintendo guy. That yeah. was the one between him and the rare developers that were that was like making stuff happen for them, and they wanted to do something special because Ken was really attached to KI, and he was mostly responsible for a lot of mechanics in the game and stuff like that. I think it was Ken, but there might have been some other factors involved. So we had to thank once again Ken Lobb for making that kind of stuff possible, um, and making a lot of rareware and Golden Eye and all this crazy shit back in the day actually possible. Um, it's just crazy he was able to convince like let, let's just say ken did spearhead that like mm-hmm. the cd thing it's just amazing that they spent that money i mean a cd back then in like 95 was way more expensive than even a few years later sure you know like like i don't know 99 or something so the fact that they spent that that amount of money and ki did on the super nintendo did sell like a couple of million units so they must have like it made did, the I money think it ended up being that. in top 10 best selling SNES games and it came out very late nice. in the SNES's lifetime it was like right before N64 because they were still yep. they were planning on making it a ultra 64 game and it just didn't happen mm-hmm. so I, I heard a lot of stories about how they had to like 
like what they were able to do, what voltage they were able to shoot into those cartridges to make certain <laughs> sounds happen and all this nutty stuff because they just had uh, after after all the sprite work <clears throat> was shoved into the game, they had literally like no room for the music. So they were like, well, we have the game audio, we have the music, we have the effects audio. Uh, what's the thing that's now the problem? Like, well, the music tracks are too long. So what the hell do we do? And they had to rewrite the music completely type of stuff. So KI being on the SNES is like a, a magic, like a, a magic act in, in itself. And the music is apparently a part of it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, no, I think KI just holds a lot of Killer Instinct and music is just a, a very close sort of relationship that carries in, as we talk about other things like all the way forward but that's definitely the big one for me you know i played i took my ki cuts and i gave it to my junior high like a dance and i literally gave him my ki oh, nice. cut soundtrack and <laughs> I, cool. I said play uh play let's do it now track number eight or nine <laughs> and everyone Jago's in my high theme. school dance or not even high school junior high dance was dancing to jago's theme from ki killer cut so i have like Robin's like that makes me really happy. <laughs> like, I told <laughs> That's cool. That. The seminal '90s moment. It's a shame. It's like you know you went over to the punch bowl at the dance, and then you like just knock the punch bowl over. It just splashes your crotch, and then just then the soundtrack goes to humiliation, <laughs> and then there, that'd be perfect. <laughs> but, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so for the Killer Instinct like CD package, did you have to pay for like a? No. Like a like a so it just came with like original and everything like a little slip I had a yeah. little slip case that was just in the cartridge yeah so it had a, I, it had a little slip box. case that was yeah. not shrunk wrap or anything they were just like when when retailers got it they were just like give these to everybody that buys the game mm. and they just and I I have several of them back here one of them signed by the old audio Hundreds. crew and it's got a bunch of dicks on it and stuff because those guys are very <laughs> funny and not juvenile at all. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, they just it was just a little slip case that just has a CD in it and that's it. Oh man, I, I cuz I don't I remember buying the game at like a Toys R Us, but I don't remember ever getting a CD because I remember the box, I remember that it comes in a black cartridge, full gore's on in front of it. Yeah. But I just never remember a CD unless you I just got, didn't care. My yeah, friend, just, you got maybe. fucking cheated. You got, you got shy still. Yeah, maybe. I might I might have maybe Toys R Us <laughs> ran out and they're like, here's your game. This was before that's it. <laughs> pre order bonuses too and stuff like that. I think it just yeah. came with the game. And even even on the cover of I think K AI. Yeah, dude, like the even even my big advertising Fulgore back there, it says free CD packed inside. I don't mm. packed inside. Maybe it was inside. G shit. It was inside was it inside the box or was it inside the shrink wrap, like on the outside of the box, like in the back? Yeah, that I, I don't remember. And that I don't remember. I I, I would mm. might have to ask Ken about that the next time I see him. I'm like, was the killer cut Mr. Lock? <laughs> he's like, th th this conversation again? <laughs> yeah, he's like, this guy. Jesus. I, I would assume that, yeah, it, the, my, my, my advertisement right here, the big folder says CD packed inside. So I'm I'm assuming it was just a part of the entire game package it's unfortunate yeah. that i literally have an unopened copy of kisnes and i could rip that bitch open right now and tell you but i'm just it's just not sorry no, guys. it's okay the, I'm, not like, I'm not doing, doing it bro um <laughs> but yeah I, I if you if you if you got ki i'm pretty sure like all of them came with the cd it was a it was a huge mm -hmm. initiative what i didn't i i assume because n64 carts were probably a bit more expensive to make like why didn't they just release a cd for that and they did and they, they did. didn't uh, so I had to send away for Nintendo Power because yeah. he had Ki Cuts Two, I think it was called. Yeah, it, and it was KI it was that gold. render Ki Cut. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, it would definitely have to have gold in the title. And it had the render of uh, Kim Woo and Tusk back to back. Yeah, and I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna get this on cassette. Uh, do you, so because I could play that? it. It might still be at my parents' house, but oh. I doubt it. If uh, like, you have the cassette version, that is worth so much money. Ah, oh, shit. Um, <laughs> oh, shit. So, if someone told me back in, like, 96, you're gonna be on something called a podcast, and it's gonna it's gonna be all about fighting games, I would have kept it. I'd love to, I'd love to show it off, but I I always wondered why the, that was just a send away for Nintendo Power. Like, yeah. you, you could get it on CD, or you could get it on cassette. And I was like, I had to opt for cassette, because A, 
think it was less expensive and b i had more devices that could play it yeah and they had a special remix of maya's theme that a really long intro where it was just jungle noises oh and, it would and they build put, they up. ended up putting that on the new ki soundtrack i, I yes. like i never heard this before what the hell is this from i guess it was from the sound the old ki2 soundtrack yeah yeah it was just the only it even said like remix or whatever and they just wanted like 101 jungle sound effects to really get its money's worth because it was like at least two minutes of like rainforest sounds and monkeys and like the 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 amount of fucking monkey noises that rare probably put in all their games across all the donkey kongs all of maya's themes like there's so much they're just like play the monkey noise over and over and over again they use that at nauseum so ki2 i really wish they had somehow shipped the soundtrack i i I, Ken Lob was still there at the time, but I guess I guess it was probably too expensive at at that moment because N sixty four carts were like notoriously expensive to yeah, manufacture that, that and all that. Those first production lines weren't cheap, apparently. And I think Ki I think Ki Gold wasn't a, a launch game or a very close to launch game. And yeah, yeah. They're, dealing, they're probably taking a hit on the hardware. They're taking a hit on the cartridges in some way. They're trying to make mm. money in some fashion. Mm. Um, and it, Ki two soundtrack is like it's the same it's as good i think of the first one i don't think it's worse i don't think it's better there, there's just some tracks where i'm like tj combos is like i prefer tj combos ki2 uh music to his ki1 um i jago's is different but i like it just as much i i prefer orchids so a lot it's like a mix and match like i prefer this one here prefer, so for me it kind of comes out to like just as good but i i wouldn't say i I prefer it or I dislike it more. So what do you what do you feel, Max? Ugh. I wow. you know, I wow. can't KI one soundtrack is just it's Cinder's theme, bro. There's no Cinder. Cinder. That's true. <laughs> like like that's the there's that's no true. like Glacius's theme is substantially better in KI one than the than the like Glacius's yeah, yeah, theme is yeah. like dee, 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 dee. you're gonna get a lot of this, guys. Don't worry on, on this. Spinals on this show. though. <laughs> Spinals has the pirate pirate skeleton. Yeah, and I, I do think like Spinals mm. is better. Spinals is like more epic than the like the, the weird bone sounds like type <laughs> yeah, of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh yeah, there's some that are better. And I would argue I think there is argument that Orchid's theme is also better in KI mm. two. Uh, there's definitely argument to be had there, but Fulgore's definitely not. Fulgore is a 100% better. Oh, bam, 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 bam. Yeah, I, Come no, on. I, I, I don't think it's bad in KI2, but Fulgore's okay. theme in KI1 is epic as fuck, dude. It's it so is, sick. It is. So, I, yeah, I, I, I think it's it's funny how even in the old in the olden days, music and CDs and cassettes are like directly attached to those. And this is when soundtracks didn't exist for video games. You, you, you did not go out and buy a soundtrack for games. If you look at what was happening in Japan, they did, right? Yeah, there, all the time. You can, you can literally look up the old soundtrack for X-Men versus Street Fighter released on CD, and it costs like $400 like, if you get the Japanese version. Like you'll look yeah. at the back cover of an EGM, and it'll yes. just say like, King of Fighters piano collection. Yeah. And you're like, whoa, what's that? <laughs> yeah. And and I it's funny, I actually don't remember music being sort of commercially avail available for video games outside of just downloading songs and stuff that people ripped MP3s for in some way until I remember working at Electronics Boutique in like the year 2000 and 2001 type stuff. And at some point on just the front kiosk they have a bunch of cds that showed up and then just showed them out and it was tech and tag tournament and final whoa. fantasy 10 and it was like whoa what the hell is this and it was the entire tech and tag tournament ps2 soundtrack and and all the big tracks and vocal tracks from final fantasy 10 that was like the first time i remember like oh you can now buy the music for these games and dude i wore out that tech and tag soundtrack that's where i fell in love with mm. that music i it literally melted in my cd player after so many hot days of, of running that <laughs> disc because <laughs> i would see these soundtracks and like imports in my chinatown here in montreal and i would say like it wasn't a great selection but you'd see like one or two fighting games you'd see a lot of final fantasy you'd see zelda like you'd see uh hyrule symphony that yeah. was just Ocarina of Time soundtrack just done with an actual symphony or, or a facsimile of it, at least. So I would get occasionally get one, but it was never games I was super... Like, I never see Fatal Fury or Toshin Den or even Virtual Fighter. I would see the occasional Tekken, maybe, like, maybe Tekken 3, which I did get, because Tekken 3 is a big one. I don't have much of a memory of what Tekken 1 or 2 music is, 
but three like Eddie Gordo's theme, three. like almost yeah. all of them. Three is good. All of them are are, are absolute bangers. Justin, you played uh, Tekken three for the first time. For uh, the first time, not too long ago. What any music there that made an impression on you? Um, I would say I like Jin's music a lot. Yes. Yeah. Right, Jin. Jin's. I mean, he's pretty much the main character, so of course you're gonna make him like such a banger. Uh, so that one. But I remember mostly from like just Tekken Tag. Like Tekken Tag music was just crazy good. Right, but, but real quick, cool, yeah. But real no question, eyes, Matt. We're, no we're, ears, we're, we're no face, no <laughs> <Yeah>. nose. <laughs> were were those CDs in Chi- in your Chinatown? Were they official? Because mine in Chinatown was bootleg. Like literally, it was just bootleg all day. Yeah, yeah. So you, I, uh, I definitely had that market, and that's that's how I watched a lot of anime. To be honest, uh, in in the nineties, because like how much anime you have seen as a human pretty much equates to your <laughs> physical value yep. in real life. So it's like okay, <laughs> so you're like gauging uh, how do I watch as much anime as i possibly can you know from the from the great nation of japan uh as cheap as possible and at the time like downloading it was a very high unlikelihood you had to go to Mm -hmm. all these like weird shops that had printed out like labels and stuff like that just burn dvds that uh that was like the premium way to buy it so if you wanted to buy because this is when you, you if you bought one dvd of like cowboy bebop it was like 38 dollars at some yeah, house. It, was it was so expensive so i could buy like all of evangelion for like 30 bucks like the entire series yep. and that was incredible so yes they, they also had music cds and everything was burned everything was just aftermarket and even i remember god rest my poor effing soul uh i i bought uh, the entirety of tenchi muyo universe on ebay and i got it delivered on ebay and it was just a bunch of fucking cds <laughs> just had just writing boot, on them just, yeah just so like cds four, i was oh, like oh my shit. god and okay. they were like in 140p possibly at the time they were so shitty i'm like i got so so you got off. tenchi muyo the first thing i ever got on ebay was street fighter the animated usa series oh okay. that that's was good. You, that's a good one though it was it was good in the sense I've never seen this. It was never on in Canada. So yeah. I was like, oh, wait, this actually exists. Let me see it. There's an episode about Final Fight. Yo, let's fucking go. <laughs> and the music in that was abjectly terrible. But um, there's, there's something to say about, like, I remember a lot of people saying the music in Street Fighter 2 V, the anime series, was also quite good. And and as, not, maybe not especially in the dub, but the dub had that weird theme where it's kind of ethereal, then you just hear a guy go, Street Fighter! Street Fighter! <laughs> he just says it over and over. He just says it over and over. Um, but there's lots of like, I, I've, I've been meaning to delve, because you know, when you make videos and, and, and stuff on YouTube, you're always looking for fresh new soundtracks that not a million people have already used before. Sure. And I was thinking about, instead of like, you know, playing Moonlit Wilderness for the third t- the 30,000th time, as good as it is, on fighting game videos, why don't I see if like the Tekken anime or the a Street Fighter anime has a decent soundtrack? Just because maybe it'll sound a little bit similar to the games or or maybe not. What is up, everybody? Today's episode is sponsored by Manscaped. And guess what? Summer's gone. Fall is here. And what and what you know about fall? It's about fresh ball falls. Make sure those balls are fresh because season of pumpkin spice is making sure your crotch looks nice. Sip that cider in that fireplace and make sure you cross them legs so the balls can breathe freely. But let's talk about the products, Matt. We got the lawnmower 4.0 and the weed we got whacker the, nose. Oh god, Ooh, this it, that this, buzz? this will all for the fall this this will be there to to help uh, everything down below the waist because you have to do that for your significant other uh to, you know in the fall or any other season really so um you know lots of manscape ads out there but like you know seeing is believing i've been using this razor uh in general you know every 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 so often and it's and it's really helped me personally it's also helped me with my confidence because if there's one thing i lack it's confidence so i'm really glad that uh manscaped has sponsored this episode today and giving me that boost of confidence i need mr wong sir 
Let's go. I mean, that confidence has been boosted by like plus 100, like RPG style right yeah. there. The best, the best times to actually obviously use the lawnmower 4.0. It's probably, I mean, where everybody else does it when, <laughs> as since they're a kid in the shower, right? It's because, you know, I mean, obviously yes. these are waterproof. Um, so that's like, it really helps a lot. The fact that the lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, it helps reduce the nicks, right? And it reduces the ingrown hairs. And of course, mm -hmm. the most important part, the risk of grooming accidents. You don't want to have that trauma and then keep keep it all hairy because you got a trauma accident so this helps risk those grooming accidents because who else wants to see some some red balls nobody wants to see some red balls they want to see some fresh balls for exactly. fresh fall balls exactly right? <laughs> but where can where can they uh get some of this uh manscape action for the lawnmower and obviously because it is fall season we gotta make sure our balls are fresh as hell well, they can go to manscaped.com and they can get 20% off and free shipping with the code TKO. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com where you can use the code TKO. Manscaped, clear out your leaves. It's your tree trunks time to shine. Thanks yeah, again, <laughs> Manscaped, <laughs> for this amazing ad read. And let them hairs fall down to the ground. <laughs> um. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Street Fighter Alpha, uh, like we'll we'll get into it, but it's like not, maybe not so much new generation, but Jazzy NYC, like just generally Alex's theme was also a big impactful thing for me. Around the same time as mm -hmm. Virtual Fighter uh, Three, I was just all about Jazzy NYC. Like uh, some other tracks in New Generation and, and Second Impact, I'm like, yeah, I could take them or leave them. And of course, we all know Third Strike like kind of perfected the music yeah, there. Dude, but if you go back and you play a bit of Second Impact and New Gen, you realize how different audio wise the whole game mm -hmm. is yep. compared to Third mm -hmm. Strike. It is substantially it's, different. It's definitely more jazzy than like hip hoppy. Like there's yep. a bit of overlap on both, but it's it's neat. Like it is different compared to like even what Alpha sounds like. Alpha, even though it's got like a couple of great themes, it, out of like Street Fighter Two. Alpha, Third Strike, and even, well, after Third Strike, I don't know how hot of a take this is, but it's like, uh, kind of, I can't hum you a single theme of anything after Third Strike. Street Fighter 4 has indestructible. No, yeah, I was about to say. Street Fighter 4's Aside, main theme for sure, but I, yeah, Street Fighter 4 was mostly new compositions of remixes. old themes. Like, uh... What, what that that one that has like the big build up then it goes doo, 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 doo. that doo, one's amazing doo, right doo, doo, there's some, yeah there's some really great tracks in street fighter 4 but they were largely the same old stuff that you yeah, heard yeah. just new new remix you know which made sense given that the whole thing with street fighter 4 is like hey hey remember street fighter 2 this yeah. is street fighter street fighters come back revival but it's like five you, you know okay look i know there's it's a, a bunch of like remixes for street fighter 4 but I, I feel like we could agree that Rufus's theme was pretty darn good, though. I don't remember I don't any even, of it. Who? Really? Rufus? You, Ruf you have Rufus to hum it to me. He's like, it's like, he, he does like karate sounds. I'm Rufus! In his, in his music. He's like, who? Ball, hey! Bow. Who? Is that hey. the one? And like, that sounds yeah, awful. He, it, it sounds, uh, no, it's good. <laughs> it's, it's good, okay. Yeah, is that Trust the one that goes, ball, bow, dun, 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 ball, bow, bow, like, bow, like, it'll be, yeah, it'll be randomly, who? Yes. Hey! ha -cha. Like, yeah, that good! Right. <laughs> yeah, I remember this one. All right, it, yeah. You're I, really I selling I it. it. I'll give you that. I do remember it. Uh, like, what's Crimson Viper? What's El Ferretti's theme? I don't. Dun 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 Abe, dun, dun Abel's theme, Matthew. Dun, yeah, yeah. Dun. I remember El Forte's theme, but Abel, I don't oh, think he. A, I don't think Abel has a soul, actually. A, a, <laughs> Abel's theme is Je m'appelle Abel. <laughs> this, is, this is my music. Like, yeah, I, you know, that's it. Um, I don't know. I don't I mean, remember, I remember that language. I don't understand. I'm American. <laughs> <laughs> Papa da boopy. Um, so, I. I the final fight characters at least was also like a bit of a theme, but like, um, yeah, Cody stuff, like one, two, three, bring the yeah. beat back. Like that's like the most iconic to me. Cause I, I mean, I did listen to it the most and that carried over to street fighter five, but like, I, I don't like was street. I, cause I don't remember anymore. Was street fighter five music for old characters, mostly just still remixes of old of yeah. like the classic yes. ones it still was huh yeah. and that yeah. and, and then, then like they butchered jury's theme and no one was really happy about that but mm -hmm. yeah street fighter 5's music well still good right it still has great themes and great renditions of classic street fighter themes it, it fell into that same old same old 
where it's like, yeah, this is just Street Fighter Four again, you know, but it yeah. looks different. Okay. And it was the same thing with the music. It's funny that you you mention how Third Strike was largely a lot of like jazzy themes, you know, but what is the overall theme of the game? Hip hop, right? It's pretty clear. There's like an urban street hip hop feel to the main select and the our track mode and the credits well, and all well, that stuff. Well, no, I, I said uh, Second Impact was more jazzy and Third Strike was more hip hoppy. But I don't you, think you it might... is though. Like the, the the actual music in the characters in the characters thing, like uh, not really. Oh, in the actual stages, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I just meant like overall, it has a, a sure. like a because of the select screen theme. Exactly. And, and, yeah, and yeah. I, I but, think that that's an interesting like note that they did, and they're literally copying that with Street Fighter Six, right. where they're like, them. yeah, we're gonna make our all, all the theming of everything around the game very like hip hop ish, but then you listen to the character themes, and it's like. Reuse theme sounds like a jazz band in the middle of, you know, in the middle of a metropolitan city just going ham. I'm like, this is not hip hop. This is definitely something different. And almost yeah. every other character's theme is like some sort of weird mix of jazz and new age and all this kind of stuff. And and, f and of everything I've heard, like nothing's really doing it for me in terms of music there. Uh, I think it, it's because it's, it's, it's new. Kind of, yeah. Because yeah. it's so it's different. It's new. And then also it's like, what we expected from like how we talk about how Street Fighter 4 it's like remixes of same characters Street Fighter 5 same remixes so Street Fighter 6 everyone's kind of like we actually I guess we do like the remixes or we just used to the <laughs> I remixes guess so. at, yeah. at that part and, right? and but, but, like, but yeah but the third strike did a, gr a pretty good job with like that's not really like because the, all their character themes are pretty much I would say pretty different at least the stages are pretty different yeah uh for the for the most part because i do think third strikes just music compared to like second impact a new generation it just it's just more impactful like it's louder it's so much more louder where it's mm -hmm. like you can tell this is like so much different from like the other two series it's I, it's hard though because like reuse uh street fighter 3 theme is just so simple it's just like boom, boom oh it's boom, so boom, good boom, though boom, i love boom. the drums but but that it's drums. like that feels like ryu it's yeah, not it his does. old themes, but it feels like Ryu. And in Street Fighter Six, it's like I don't even you couldn't even tell me if you you had to yeah. tell me this was Ryu's theme because I, I couldn't guess it. Like it's, you know, it's funny because I'm actually echoing your feelings right now with Street Fighter Six and a lot of what other people are feeling about Street Fighter Six's themes, how they like are a completely different identity. I remember feeling this way in uh, when I when I, learned, when I heard Third Strike's music for the first time. I could see that. Or I didn't like it very much. I, I didn't say like it, this is bad, but I wanted that identity. You know, I wanted mm. the like the alphas and the twos identity in this music. And granted, I barely played new gen. I barely played second impact. Like, I think I honestly put more time into third strike by the time that came out than those first two games just because no one liked them when they came mm -hmm. out. So I, it, later on, I kind of realized how different thematically the music is in, in the first two titles to have the comparison of third strike. Uh, but yeah, there was like the hip hop theme, but I don't remember really specifically like Jazzy doing it for me. It wasn't until like all the, the memes, like the mid two thousands memes of like best banger song in the world, like Jazzy NYC. And I was like, really like this song. And then with some perspective, like the shit obviously changes. Like you'll eventually like learn <laughs> to love music if you just hear it enough. And I was playing third strike more than literally anything in my life. So yeah, it, a lot of third strike soundtrack like really grew on me in a similar fashion to Marvel versus Capcom too, you know? Mm. No, I mean, Marvel's that, Capcom 2 still doesn't do it for me. Like, I, I think I'm still at that it's point. It's funny now, though, at least. You know, okay. I it's like funny. the I like when I like when people like uh people on YouTube they do like musical themes like acapella and stuff to it. Like, I think that sounds better than the actual <laughs> game soundtrack by itself. Yeah. Uh, but I was the person that like grew up where we had like the burn Dreamcast CDs and we just put custom music on it. Yep. Mm, right. Yeah. yeah. I I yeah. definitely did that, but it's crazy because I never did that. I could. Yep. Ever. In essence, the Matrix, the Matrix, Matrix uh, right. scenes, right? But That's I, the most two thousands thing yeah, it is, I've it ever is, heard it is. in my life. But but I would never change the music for other games, only for Marvel Two. Oh. CBS Two, I kept the same, and Third Strike, I kept the same. But Marvel yeah. Two. That music had to change. <laughs> that music definitely had to change. I, I, have a, okay. I have a funny story, and I, I might have told it on this podcast before because, you know, I've been, Tell I've, it been again. I've been talking about this stuff for like 10 years, and it's kind of hard to remember. Like, did I talk about this recently on stream or the podcast or like a decade ago? I had a burn copy 
of Marvel 2 that a friend gave me, and he's like, I had his own custom mix, right? Uh, actually, no, I downloaded it from, the, from LimeWire or some shit, right? So right, it was yeah. just like, Huzzah. oh, cool, like, let's get some different versions. It was like a Michael Jackson mix, and I put that to, to CD, and, uh, and so I put in this Marvel 2 track, and it was like, it was actually kind of dope. It had like a bunch of like modern music on it, and it was like, oh, this is pretty great. And then the character windscreen comes up, which is normally like, but I'm bam, but da 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 like, and it shows your three characters like bam bam bam, and it's like, here's your score. And then instead of that, it's ass titties, ass and titties, <laughs> ass ass. I was like, what the yes. soap and water? <laughs> of course, the only people that knew who this song was at the time was Kenny and Steve. <laughs> yeah. And so they loved it. I was like, what the fuck is this song? What's ass going on? Titties. titties. So uh, yeah, I never found oh, that mix shoot. again. I'd love to just fire that up on stream at some point, but I think the CD oh, melted. Oh yeah, absolutely true. Um, but yeah, like that—that that was a—that was a big thing. We had custom custom versions of the Dreamcast CVS2 where we made like initial D tracks and we made personal uh, mixes. There was some Black Eyed Peas song. I think we had Bombs Over Baghdad for the old like uh, CVS2 stage with like the 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 cars jumping off all the sand dunes. Oh, and the, it, like, the desert, the desert went yeah. awkwardly okay, yeah. well. I'm like, this is <laughs> badass, dude. I'm getting hyped as fuck. <laughs> like, yeah, there's a lot of that stuff was really cool. You know, just the ability to. Uh, add your own level of spice to games and it, yeah. it wasn't really that hard the, the most expensive part of it was buying cdrs at the time yeah and uh, a way you could also get around it if you were playing fighting games on it is if you had an original xbox remember they had that feature you can just rip yeah. your own soundtrack oh my god i forgot about that i don't know if that was that a per game thing or was that like a system-wide no. feature no on, on 360 because I, I i used it for ki the old the old ki soundtrack on 360 it was like you just dumped a bunch of mp3s into the system and mm -hmm. then you could choose to uh, uh, on some games it didn't work from what i remember uh, it definitely okay, worked on thinking. several fighting games where you can just replace the music so i was listening mm -hmm. to, to ki music during like several fighting games yeah i think i did that once or twice but now i can't remember what the what the game was when i had an original X i mean I still have one but like my original original one that i was using to play um street fighter anniversary collection yeah, yeah it didn't didn't mess with the music in that obviously but i think for like uh, snk stuff may, maybe i did probably maximum impact if, if anything um so kof all like you know SNK in general does have a music history. I don't feel like it's obviously as rich as Capcom's because it's like, well, it's it's good and certainly uh, a lot of themes people remember well. Like it, it's not one of those forefront aspects of the franchise to me personally. Like it was just mostly about Street Fighter music, KI, yeah. and like you know the three D fighters. And it was only much much later where I got more of an appreciation, especially when you have to delve into the soundtracks if you're making videos. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I'm I'm talking about KOF or whatever. And you have to go in and find those things like off the top of some like rando mainstream person's head. Oh, what music does Street Fighter have that's really good? They're gonna say maybe Third Strike or Street Fighter 2. But then Max or other people is like, you know what, soundtracks are really good for Street Fighter. Uh, a little game called Street Fighter EX, or yeah. you know, yeah. Th I, then you have to. Yeah. That was so good. Would anyone think, uh, like at the time those games were released, like this is going to be, this is going to age so well? And Definitely like not. these these 3D spinoffs that at the time is this accurate? At the time, people didn't really like the EX games. Like they weren't looked upon. Yeah, favorable. EX games yeah. were not looked upon highly. They looked in like the mm -hmm. like sort of the aftermarket like Chinese bootleg Street Fighter. <laughs> Uh, to, yeah, be, to be completely honest, which is which is unfair because it, those games were literally put together uh, by the spearhead of uh, Nishitani, who was the guy that came up with Street Fighter Two. You know, yeah, like the original dude. He went to Rarika to make those games. But I specifically remember. Uh, obviously, Sakura's theme is a big one for me. LOL. But the music in that game has such an identity. All the character themes are different than their themes from Street Fighter 2, completely different character themes, and they're all fucking bangers. They're crazy mm. good. Hokuto's theme is one of my favorite fighting game themes like there is. And Guile's theme is like, what was it, Sunset something? Like, oh my God. Sun it, yeah, it was Sunset something. I it's remember. so good. <laughs> I hope that's its name. Sunset something. Sunset something. <laughs> Uh, but like KOF, like, um, or, or a fatal fury to me, like it has a bit more cause I, you know, I played the games a bit more in the nineties than I ever did KOF, but like fatal fury, um, 
special, like uh, Fatal Fury 2. They had iconic, like, Street Fighter 2-esque themes for each of their stages. Whereas, like, KOFs mostly just kind of went for a general theme. Like, a lot of piano, a lot of saxophone. Good stuff, but it was, like, shared yeah. amongst a lot of stages. Aside from, like, boss themes and such. Yeah. But... Like, it's, of all SNK games, like, yeah, Fatal Fury to me, like, had, I like, you know, a lot of iconic themes, but I'm sure there's stuff out there that's, like, really, like, maybe Art of Fighting 2 yeah. had really good themes, but I've never delved into it. I wanted to ask, are there, like, some lesser-known series that you guys remember, like, soundtracks being actually surprisingly good, like, hmm. either in SNK or otherwise? Um, I guess for, for me, the one that really stands out the most was probably, like, King of Fighters 95, yeah, ninety five. Um, yeah, ninety five. Uh, the Fatal Fury stage with the water. It's like da 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 da. So that one is like my favorite. Uh, but I think Last Play Two is also pretty darn good too. Oh, good choice. Yeah, I like Last Play Two. But yeah, I agree with you. Like, I didn't really care too much about like SNK music. I I know hardcore fans are definitely really like they know more about it. Like every time, I think when King of Fighters fifteen first came out and they had like the jukebox, it was like such a it was such a good thing to add in because people could like check out, well, yeah, let's check out all these other musics from like different series. Yeah, they're and, adding they're adding maximum yeah. impact music in there <laughs> now know. too, which is crazy. Right. And then the, the the coolest part about it is that like when I have people tell me chat, you got to listen to this one from like King of Fighters 2000 or 99, like uh, it's mm -hmm. always Is Isaka. Isaka or Isaka, yeah. one of those that, that people always recommend that one because every version, it's always different. Like they always have a, a, a different version of Isaka every time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to pinpoint if there's like, and I think at the time it, it definitely would be Street Fighter EX for me because that was not a popular, specifically popular game. Like Street Fighter EX plus Alpha was just this thing that came out and I that just loved the music for it and nobody played it. <laughs> like none of my friends liked it. Everyone said it felt bad. Like, why would you play this when you can play, you know, other 3D games that look way better like Tekken? So it was a good <laughs> point. Um, Mortal Kombat kind of you know, had an identity where it fit the stages, but the stages weren't to the characters yeah. or their personalities. It was just courtyards and throne rooms and such. Yeah. And, and for the most part, like it was the same for, uh, Mortal Kombat two and three. Yeah. Um, but up until three, I was like, yeah, I remember these themes, like the street theme from MK three. Like you just hear the, the female, like uh yelling noises, like, Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, da -na 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 -na. <laughs> And nowadays, I know this Mortal Kombat music very well, because whenever you use it in a video, WB made sure to license the fuck out of it. Oh, yeah. So at least once a month, an editor, <laughs> like, I will not remind an editor, it's my it's my bad, but they'll, like, I just put the Forest theme or the Deadpool yep. theme. I'm like, nope, uh, they licensed the fuck out of that. Dan Forden, I'm sure he has nothing to do with it, but, like, you know, I, I always get called out on that on, on YouTube. But, like, the... the a lot of those tracks are still quite good. Are they as iconic as, you know, certain Street Fighter yeah. themes? No, mm -mm. but they 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 still had a mood to them. And after that, sorry about that. Oh, I thought, after, you, about to, I thought you were actually about to play the music. <laughs> well, listen to this shit. <laughs> I got the that new sound beat. you've been looking for. <laughs> after that, like MK4, MK4 still had one or two, but it's like the 3D MKs and even more modern Mortal Kombat nowadays. I can't even. I don't even hear the music. Single thing. I, don't I don't hear the music right. at all. I just, I just hear the attacks mainly. Yeah, the combos. And that's, I, that's I, it. I mean, I'm unfortunately going to echo this, and like Kenny would, you know, uh, hunt me down if I said this. But I obviously played Mortal Kombat and Mortal Kombat 2 and Mortal Kombat 3 slash UMK3 quite a bit because those games were just extremely popular. Uh, yeah. I didn't like them as much as classic 2D Street Fighter games just because they felt weird like the gameplay of street fighter was always really poppy and snappy and really responsive and mk games weren't exactly that they had a diff different feel to them still to this literal day um but i don't have any beloved reference for any of the music in classic mk's like no. like the old mk select themes or anything like that like none of it like really them. brings back any specific vibe or memory that it's the movie it's the mortal Kombat yeah, yeah, movie you, there, you only go. have the and movie then, that's then, it. what <laughs> all you got is and i think this is another like conversation we can have which is like 
fighting game music in movies because there's some interesting topics like, and we because we talked about this before a little bit with our movie conversation but the mortal kombat movie and the american dub street fighter of movie, street fighter yeah which yeah. gave it a completely different soundtrack and completely different feel to the film uh based on the american version are pretty much some primo examples of like oh god this is so sick like this <laughs> yeah. shit is so sick when i think of street fighter i think of corn and silver chair you yeah. know <laughs> I, I think of like kmfdm with that yeah that damn chun lee versus vega scene oh dude that music is so cool that that's such a different track in the japanese version it is it's like a piano it's like a slow paced i think we talked about this before it's like a slow paced <laughs> piano track i believe yeah. so mm -hmm. um so mortal kombat like uh, yeah since ever since the 3d ps2 games it's like i i, I don't i don't know what the, the the general uh plan for was was for music because no one has their own themes like there's no theme of sonya there's no there's no going back to that because it was all tied to the stages but like the character's personality is like guile or, or chun Li were always they the stage came with the character yeah yeah and and for the most part like killer instinct uh, followed that same thing every character has their own stage and it was taken of course to the ultimate level in ki 2013 where they're like no the music is another character yeah. altogether and like to this day like nothing's going to top that synergy between the music and the gameplay like until another ki or another uh, fighting game dev decides no we're gonna make music like a a big factor of it justin yeah. and i were actually playing uh uh i will by the time this comes out yeah it won't be out yet so i won't say what fighting game we were playing we were playing something where as we struck each other chords were added to the music yeah, just that was cool just regular hits not like during an ultra combo or something it would be like specific chords it's like when you're playing wind waker or other zelda games where the music has like dun -dun 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 -dun, when you're hitting people and just in regular combat i was like oh that's cool you could do that in like a bunch of different games, but it would be hard because you don't want it to sound too annoying or it gets in the way of the gameplay. Mm -hmm. But um, it, it's something I would like to see explored a little bit. I I do think there's like a rhythm fighter that's coming out on Steam. I think it's actually yeah, called I, something I like I heard I heard something about that. I, I, yeah, it was like Steam or Switch, but yeah, it was like a rhythm based off the rhythm, uh, like because it's like a rhythm game. So you hit it at, the, at the just frame and then you do X amount of damage or something like that. Yeah, but it is like like almost like um puzzle fighter type characters that are yeah. like standing in front of each like other chibis, and they're yeah, yeah chibis or, or something along those lines. I'm like, that's really cool. And like there's something to do about that. I think there's also a Snoop Dogg fighting game called Way of the Dog where he's punching people, but you <laughs> had to you had to uh time it to the beat or, or the music or whatever. It's like a bad Xbox three sixty like <laughs> digital download game and there 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 are those oddities out there, but I would like to see something that that takes it even further. And I guess it's gonna be ki whatever in the future well i, I realized uh i forgot I, another game that had such a good soundtrack uh the guilty gear series guilty gear oh yeah accent core amazing Ooh, i yes, love good. the axe guilty gear accent core is just i think that's iconic i don't remember i don't i don't think i listen too much of strive besides obviously the main theme just going over my head like all the time because the main theme is very like powerpuff girl addicting <laughs> yeah but but overall yeah the guilty gear soundtrack in general for all their games i think they do an amazing job yeah so it's, if we're, if we're gonna different. get into music we gotta because the next biggest fighting game outside of killer instinct that probably really wanted music to have like a huge identity and like carry it and possibly mm. to the biggest degree i think i think guilty gear eclipsed that especially if like guilty gear x to a degree uh, the because the music quality was substantially bumped up and sounded a lot better than the old PlayStation game. Uh, yeah, Gu Guilty Gear X's music and the fact that so many characters are literally ingrained into rock references, like the whole yeah. game is just a a love letter to like Queen and just rock bands that have permeated the Guns space until that time frame. Yeah, like that is obviously like if we're gonna talk about music and fighting games, and I do wish that the music integration in some Guilty Gear games was a bit better. Like even with the newest one, they just let the tracks run. Uh, yeah. It still is a love letter to like the musical, like the musical platform and and video games, which is like. No, like one of the coolest things about the Guilty Gear series in general that you get all these hybrid weird looking anime characters but they're all referencing like bands you know
Yeah. If, I mean, if, even, even their, their thing is as heaven or hell, let's rock. The fact yeah, that they yeah. use that, it's like they really want to make sure the music um, really just like kind of like sticks out to you besides the gameplay. If Little V Mills has made multiple covers of your fighting game music on his channel, that means you have some good music. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> so, I, yeah. I remember like, listening to that. And that's that's definitely another one, because I'd say for me personally, around that time frame, the first big identifier that the music is amazing was absolutely Killer Instinct. And then after that was Tekken 3. And I would literally mm -hmm. record like off of the speaker into a, a cassette just so I could listen to Tekken 3 music at school and stuff like that. Um, and then after that is absolutely Guilty Gear X. And that game was just so friggin' mind blowing how it looked, how it played, like the theme of the game, like it was it was just let's rock, you know, like Justin was saying. And then all the musical tracks, like that was the next game that was like, we are running to Kazaa, run to Napster, run to LimeWire, <laughs> find the Guilty Gear X soundtrack. Some guy ripped all the MP3s. Oh, thank God, all of my friends had it. We all listened to it. We got the vocal ones. It wasn't nearly as good. <laughs> like, <laughs> but like that was that was the next like big musical like identity fighting game like guilty gear had such a huge impact uh, the 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 dreamcast like japanese guilty gear at least on my my circle of friends so you, you mentioned uh see like wondering where you can get the soundtrack it just brought back a memory of i think at the one of the the chinese uh stores in my chinatown i think i saw this once and i never bought it but then i saw it pop up like you know years later online it was that one street fighter 2 concept album where it's like the characters sing like guile sings in his theme yes. or balrog what? sings in his theme oh. and they talk about like like my name is balrog or in this case like my name is bison and i am a crazy boxer and i punch like to live my life and like it's actual lyrics from the characters perspectives yeah. and like blanca's is just a bunch of growling or some shit <laughs> <That's good. laughs> like I, there's some, i never heard I, this one no, it's like a, I think it's called I forget what it's called. It probably has like this amazing name like Street Fighter 2 Passion Singing or something like that. But I I I need to sit down and listen to that because I remember hearing about this not even too long ago again. Like someone brought it up. Like I think it was on Twitter. Someone's like, "Oh yeah, there's a song where a uh, boxer is just talking about his life being a boxer and how he's had it so rough." And I'm like, "This is so cool. People My need to do that." Money. <laughs> I mean, you can you can yeah, you can lobby that that Guilty Gear music kind of also does that with the lyrics for uh, people's individual songs and yeah. stuff and talking a bit more about them. And you can't have lyrics on every song or even a lot of them like Street Fighter 2, yeah, it doesn't doesn't really fit cuz they have no history of doing that. KI is obviously you can, you can't, you, you, you can do it. You don't need to do it. Mm -hmm. doesn't really matter. But like, you know, uh, it would be also weird for Tekken to suddenly have lyrical songs outside of intros. It would be just, I just remembered Tekken fives. Intro Tekken music I, now, love that, so I, I love that. I love that. Song. What? what? I can't. That was so it's good. All, it's so cool. And like, hey, Yachi Mishima is dead. No, Anime! but you gotta watch. <laughs> like, and then you gotta, you gotta, you gotta watch the six minute version where Asuka's coming down from yeah, like the, the Empire State Building on I mean. a bicycle. Like, it, it's, that it's was so cool good. And dramatic and da -da 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 -da, like Kazuya versus Hayachi, and Hayachi gets blown up by Jax, and then it cuts to a shot of Asuka on top of the Twin Towers or some shit. And she's like biking <laughs> da -da -da -da. down to be like, believe in your bullshit. Max, they're Max, they're doing the best they can, oh. and they're here now. No, oh. you know? no. For some I reason, know, I'm that's okay with Street Fighter Four, is but I'm not okay with that one. I did not like that one. I I understand the dichotomy of having that like super cool serious intro when that song kicks in. There is a tonal whiplash for sure. But if the entire intro was built around that silly song, I think it I think it would have gone down a bit easier. Cause, yeah, because yeah, yeah, that song that song didn't come out in the arcades. It was that was a console, yeah, console exclusive thing, yeah. song. Because yeah, so. the arcades, the arcades, you just get Heiachi Mishima's is dead, dead, and then it goes back. It goes back to main menu. Yeah. yeah. So but so yeah. So imagine how much more profits Tekken Five would have gotten in the arcades if they had that song blasting in the arcade. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to hear it still. <laughs> you still no, it, most of the attractions yeah, were already you, no audio anyway. You can, yeah, you have DDR next to you, be, be, uh, screaming "I I I, you're my little <laughs> butterfly." You're not going to hear <laughs> anything else besides that. <laughs> and that's oh, God. That actually like because. A fighting game that I really like, they did put it next to the DDR machine. <laughs> yep. And I and I couldn't concentrate. Like I hey, I'm glad you're you're working out and you're getting your steps in, sir, and like you're you're enjoying it. But like I 
It's very distracting. I can't play. I think well, it was actually a Tekken up. machine. Yeah. I think it might have been Tekken 5 even. Like, Tekken uh, 5 was next to the DDR machine for, for me. So a bunch of sweat was just flying all over on that's P2 actually, side. Yeah, that's actually a good, a, a good reference where it's like, what are the greatest like fighting game like vocal tracks, like really vocal identity tracks that uh that like resonate and obviously like ki has a bunch you get a lot more post street fighter 4 era after you know indestructible like it starts happening and i have to give a, a personal shout out it essentially gave like me identity uh the soul edge opening theme yes uh, jesus dude i'm like this is the most epic opening one of the greatest songs it's so sick i essentially like fashioned my entire stream Life. around it <laughs> like i screw it like this is now this is now my brand let's go with it so yeah I, I have a personal huge soft spot for soul edge and i was reminded of it back in like 2014 and, and we'll, we'll, we just might as well go into it like soul Calibur in general while it's not like it's weird music, like orchestral music that fits in with the time frame that the game takes place in, but it's still really catchy and memorable because that type of stuff can just go in one ear and out the other, but yeah. just the, just mm -hmm. the testament, the quality of the Namco sound team, like a, a lot of it. And also saying the name of the song during the intro to the fight, like it always has that little uh, like green text. Oh, yeah. The, the label. Yeah. yeah, yeah the, the little title. label was always like a cool little touch and stuff. And, it was only when I was playing Soul Calibur on, on the Dreamcast that I had rented. I could only rent a Dreamcast back in these days. And uh, I, I'd, I'd finally get Soul Calibur to actually rent. And when I got Soul Calibur 2, still still good. But like I just remember Soul Calibur 1's music being like kind of the standout. Even though there's, no I'm sure, lots of sounded like track. that before. Nope. Like it, Tekken nope. had its own identity. Street Fighter had its own identity. Like the other games had their own thing. And then, you know, 98, 99 comes along and you have this like you know, ageless sort of like historical fighting game, right? Of characters from history sort of like fighting each other. And it's like, how do you make hype music for this? And oh, they did. Oh, you get it. It's like, <laughs> it, it sounds it. like classical horns, classical strings and all this stuff, but they just make it sound epic as shit for like every single character and really mysterious. I think Soul Calibur 2 is like the peak of it, where in, in Soul Calibur 2, there's just some unforgettable tracks that, that, that play throughout that game. But yeah, Soul Calibur yeah, is, is up there with having a very unique feel to the whole game. That's the one I saw a lot at the at the Chinese stores. It was like a Soul Calibur soundtrack, and I just remember it had like the just the hilt of of either Soul Edge or Calibur had the eyeball, and it would just say like it would just have the logo. And I remember seeing it all the time. But it's like I'm gonna go in there. It's like oh, I'm gonna buy that. I'm gonna buy my Berserk manga. Like I don't, mm -hmm. I you know it's it's gonna be Berserk this week. Sorry, you know, even though I couldn't read it. Because it was all in Chinese, they translated from uh, Japanese to Chinese, and I was like, "I'll look at the pictures. I'll I'll be able to figure out what's going on." You know, yeah. I'm I'm good like that. So, um, Soul Calibur. There was one more I, I wanted to mention. Um, God, well, I get I guess it still goes back to a bit of Toshin Den, where that was like very dance. It was Street Fighter Two ish, where the music would fit in with the character, like. Yeah. Um, if it's like a like a Rungo Iron, who's just like a big burly American guy with like a club, it all it all fit really well with the characters. And I'm I am glad that there's a soundtrack out there for at least the first two games. That's very underrated. That a lot of people when I, when I've used that I've been using uh, I think uh, EG's theme from Soul Calibur Two and Soul Calibur One on some of my videos towards the end, like just the, the stinger music where, where Max's Sakura theme goes, I put these on, 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 on mm -hmm. for my videos. And I've seen lots of people like, Oh my God, like this track was so good. What is it from? And people would usually say like, Oh, it's from, from uh, Toshin Den. They're like, Oh yeah. Toshin Den. The music was the best part of that game. And I was like, yeah, you're yeah. right. You're right. Mm -hmm. I know. I know. Um, any, any, uh, iconic, uh, tracks from bio freaks you remember, Max? Um, uh, what game I completely, the further we get from that, that day, the, the more <laughs> memories start getting deleted. It's very weird. I have to go watch the video to remind myself it happened. Any, any iconic music from war gods? You tell me, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they're, they're the, any bad music, oh. any music or that were, that were just like, no, no, thanks. 
I know we mentioned Marvel versus Capcom too a little bit, but yeah, that that was just me personally. But obviously, but, a lot of people think it ages a lot better. But I think but you that's were right kind of at more, the time. It was right at the yeah, time. Yeah, right. Yeah, for sure. Right at the time, because even when you go to Marvel three, Marvel three switched back to character themes. Oh, dude. So, yeah. If yeah, you yeah, want to, yeah. the, I mean, the character themes are so good there too. It, dude, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I'd actually have to give Ultimate Marvel three, especially because the the DLC characters are incredible. If you want to talk yeah. about absolutely nailing character themes for every character and like that music is that character's identity like yeah, nova's yep. theme x23's theme like every single character in that game has an absolutely incredible character theme and they for the classic characters like captain america and stuff they just give wonderful new renditions oh my god like i i can't even tell you how incredible umvc3 soundtrack is yeah, it's so good. Even the the intro where it, it gets you so hyped when you're watching it, it's like dun dun. Like yeah. it's just, it's it's even so the, the menu theme, the main sure. theme of the game. Da, 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 yeah. It's so it's it's incredible. I absolutely, I love it. And did the I don't remember, but did the MVCI uh, have the same like character theme music, or they changed it from it? No, it absolutely it did. did. Uh, remixes, or oh, okay. it, I, I mean, as as I played the game a lot, yes, it did have character themes. They were. They were almost like Mortal Kombat 11 style, where they were mm. more cinematic and stuff like that. Characters do definitely have uh, some good themes in the game, but there's some of them that sort of like roll over each other and they're, they don't really have as much identity. Not every single one. I'd say at least a quarter of them are actually super good, uh, okay. but definitely a different direction, obviously, than the previous ones, which is unfortunate, but... Yeah, mm-hmm. some 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 Marvel themes in that game are actually really good, and then some some themes just don't have the identity that you know that that previous game sort of had. And like you know, since the the Capcom fighting clash came out not too long ago, and you know people have been exposed to like you know stuff like uh, Red Earth and and uh, Cyberbots and stuff. I remember Cyberbots having like you know you know pretty oh like these are good tracks, but like there's a lot of those other Capcom fighting games that don't get Darkstalkers. Darkstalkers has some themes, but it's never struck my ear as like super duper memorable. I don't know if that that holds true for both of you guys. Mm, the only one I can remember is Good Old Morrigan. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, of course. Du, 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 du. Yeah, <laughs> you can. Because, I can never forget that one. But but, but it's, uh, Darkstalkers has a lot of iconic sound like sounds, like just because they're so varied and there's monsters. The announcer's also quite good. Like ready. And like stuff yeah, like that. I remember the, I remember yeah. the audio of the game more than the music. Yeah, exactly. So I, I, this is not a planned thing. I just saw my phone kept buzzing. Someone's messaging me. Ketchup, PND Ketchup, who we've had on the show before, completely unprompted. He does not know we're doing a music based <laughs> uh, Triple KO episode. What? He just randomly, I'm being 100% uh, truthful about this. He has sent me a DM, and I think it's totally fine to read this because it is purely about music. But he says this, dude, I've just made a ridiculous discovery just now. I was recording some stuff and had to use my old USB C- CD drive to do it. I didn't realize I still had Dark Rift on the PC. That I didn't even know there was a PC version of Dark Rift, uh, the old N64 fighting game. Yeah. It was still inside. The in-game soundtrack for the PC version is just the N64 music, so I thought nothing of it back then. But when I double-clicked the disc and opened it, opened it into a media player, Secret the show. entire game's soundtrack can actually be accessed in this way, and it's totally uncompressed, oh. unlike the N64 <laughs> music. And it's like the pure audio. And I listened to like three seconds of it. And I do remember this game having a bit of a cool, ethereal soundtrack, by the way, of Soul Calibur. Yeah. And I'm listening to a bit, I'm like, this sounds really nice, actually. <laughs> so that was, that was get, a Midway game, right? It was, uh, no, you're, you're close to it. I think it was published by like Vic Tokai oh, or wow. something like that. It might have been Midway, but I'm not sure 100%. But it, it is around that era of like bio freaks, yeah, one, uh, one of those. Uh, war gods, Mace. <laughs> one of yeah, those games. Mace. Uh, Mace actually, now that you say it, unlike war gods and stuff, where I don't actually remember, Mace did have some cool themes because that game was high on presentation because it was a loud American game that was like you know kind of made in the same way as Ki, where it's like try to get people on board with the visuals and and the soundtrack and the 
the bombastic announcer. But I remember that having like almost KI style music where they'd throw random guitars in there. Mm -hmm. Mordos Cull had a theme with some like heavy metal, like, like, um, medieval age guitar. But then you'd have like monks, uh, monks chanting in the, uh, the, uh, Chinese monk stage. And then you'd have like very, uh, samurai sounding S music in other stages. I remember that being quite underrated. I'm going to add that to the list of like, what can I put in future videos? Mm -hmm. Actually, <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I I think like overall, I like there's a lot of games obviously that are high profile companies. You're expecting them to have pretty much iconic music just mm -hmm. because like the music stands out so well, like Street Fighter and everything. Uh, but I think another song, another game that I played recently, uh, first time ever, the music actually hits pretty hard is a uh, Ragnarok. Have you ever played? Yeah, you're talking about Ragnarok lately. What does it sound like? It it has kind of like so they use a lot of like a uh, deity characters like characters from like uh like the monkey king and like mm -hmm. the sun gods and the water gods Jesus it, yeah it, well not Jesus but you know <laughs> Jesus but it's more more for for <laughs> from, from of a, gods a, more from Asia mythology rare and they use uh they it's very like it sounds so godful like it's like really like full of god music like god it's, it godliness them, it makes, yeah it makes them feel powerful so like okay I, that, yeah that one was pretty darn good and like it's stuck because a lot of times when you play games that have like decent soundtracks like you you just don't notice it right because you just notice of like the sound the sound effects from like the uh the announcers the hit attacks or mm -hmm. you're just too involved with gaming but i was like man the music on this like i i really get that where i'm like playing a random game I'm like the music here is is really good yeah, like while actually, i'm playing you it, don't it really get your that. attention yeah, yeah. So Ragnar definitely gets that from my book, and that's that's a good like point in the same way that modern like epic music, like Marvel music, is the best example of this, where they don't they want the music to complement the action or complement the the story. They don't want it to pull your attention. They don't want the music yeah. to have too much identity. And th th what you're saying is the exact opposite of that. In a lot of fighting games of of your right, the ones that we really identify, the music does pull your attention, and it it mm -hmm. is like super complementary to gameplay type of stuff between like Killer Instinct and Tekken and Soul Calibur and all this stuff in SNK games. Now there's like, and especially, and I have to be a little critical on this. Well, I don't think it's bad, and I also don't think a lot of Marvel music is bad specifically. It does not really have identity. Uh, and that's mm. very, very, very apparent in like Injustice 2, Mortal Kombat X, uh, Mortal Kombat 9, Injustice 1, and especially Mortal Kombat 11. Like there are obviously themes throughout the game, and I don't even know if I can tell you anything outside of the main menu theme of how things <laughs> yeah, sound. Yeah, same. <laughs> like they just, they're just there, and they don't do anything to specifically get your attention in in any way. Like I would love to be hyped while playing Mortal Kombat, it's just that the game will not let me. It's very modern movie music, not Mortal Kombat mm -hmm. movies, but just like the thing where like, yeah, they want the music to complement what's going on, but it doesn't have its own identity. Like, you know, Spider-Man music in, in recent Spider-Man movies, they only started getting like, -na 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 -na, yeah. like kind of an orchestral version of that. Yeah. But for Mortal Kombat, it's like aside from trailers, like Mortal Kombat 11 trailers with like hip hop music yeah. or that final story trailer that actually used the, uh, the old 95, uh, movie theme. Like, I, I just don't think like for them, for, for NRS, like they, they're, they're interested in making themes per se. They Not want really. to make quality music, but they, it seems more like a modern Hollywood movie making or like, you know, uncharted, that type of stuff yes. where it's, it's epic sounding stuff, but it doesn't have like a whole lot of personality. And unlike Mortal Kombat one, two, three for me, which I feel does have personality, but like, you know, not as much as like Street Fighter or whatever. Yeah, and I feel it's it's unfortunate because even at the time frame, I remember pre MK eleven coming out and I'm I remember bugging the WB guys. I'm like, hey, is the Mortal Kombat theme gonna be in here finally? You're gonna bring back the old ninety five theme? Is there an issue with the old music where you can't use it anymore or something? That's why you just <laughs> never use it. And I, I think it really just comes down to the audio team on on MK's end, which has been the same since the old games, right? Just has different ideals. I think so. Right. They just have completely different takes on what fighting game audio should be. 
uh and not not just audio like there's the the audio design in mortal kombat games is incredible like the in-game effects and stuff like that the actual sound of bone crunching and shit yeah uh, like the all the voices that they have nowadays yeah, yeah and it's, it's it's actually incredible i just think it's it's funny that the music is so subverted you know where like even mm -hmm. if you crank it all the way up in the options menu you still barely hear it it's very it's very weird and even if you even if you hear it there's not much of an identity to be had so mm -hmm. having that you know an, an mk trailer come out the launch trailer for mortal kombat is like the hypest fucking thing i've ever seen from mortal kombat since the old mortal kombat movie it was, it is, it was. it's incredibly cool and it's like a, a great like modern techno remix like modern take on the 95 you know mk theme and i was just like God, I hope this is in the game, and it's not at all. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's unfortunate. The 3D MKs had that one, that one really lame. We might have talked about this before. I'm talking about it again. That one really lame music video. Uh, the band, uh, yeah. Adema, yeah, and I they that just on stream. Yeah, and he, um, what was the story that came out about it recently? The singer was like, "You have to, you have to sing this song about this Mortal Kombat game." And he's like, "Yeah, I'll be right with you." And he's at like like Warner Brothers offices or like Midway's offices, and he's like he's going in their break room. He's like, I'm gonna sit down and write this song. But then he sees that they have like a thousand ice cream sandwiches in their fridge, and he just proceeds to eat like fifteen ice cream sandwiches. Was he high? I don't know. But like he's just like I'm eating all these sandwiches, and he like he ate too many, and he had to like throw up. Oh no! And they're like, we need you in the the sound recording booth now. It's been like an hour. And he's like, okay. And he looks at like trailer footage of Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance. And he looks at it for like 30 seconds and just writes the song. And he's, yeah. and he's got like an ice cream headache. That's about to kill him. He's about to throw up and he's like, immortal scorpion. Man, man. And like, <laughs> they're just on a green screen. And I'm like, this is the greatest story in musical history. Like this has to be. Like this guy should be in like, you know, the rock and roll hall of fame for doing that. It's funny. You, you, you mentioned that like, yeah, just come up with something. Just, just say some shit. <laughs> like, and we'll record it. Um, yeah. You could do that for P PS2 Mortal Kombat games. It's easy. That's actually not that much different than what happened with, uh, the, the artist <laughs> infinite for third strike. Uh, oh yeah. Tell was, this, tell this. The dude was from Canada. Right. And I don't know. He, yeah. I, even, even he doesn't really know how he got essentially fished out from Capcom Japan because I don't even think Capcom USA found him. It was some folks in Capcom Japan that yeah, essentially so. tracked him down uh, and he wasn't super, the gig wasn't very lucrative like at all. And no kidding. I think there was an interview with the guy because the music's super iconic now. Right. And has had this like soul that has carried the game for 20 plus years. Um, when asked about it, he had to do like the the attract theme. He had to do a character select theme, a couple of other generic themes, and also the end credits theme. Um, and guess how many? Guess how long he had to do it? Yeah, just take just take a guess. How long do you think that they would give this uh, this artist to to pump out these like hip hop themes for Third Strike? If I recall, I want to say it was like a day. A day. That's no, crazy. Think. It was forty eight hours. Forty eight hours. Wow. Yeah, in two okay. days. To TD, and in two days, he came up with uh, all all the music and the Select compositions. Select the right one. Yeah. yeah. Select the first picks. Get it on out. 10, 9, 8, 9, 7, 8, 6. 7, like, 6. All this Get shit, it it's on. Like, and that's like the perfect example of like just this industry in general and even in a creative environment. When you are in a creative environment and you are like forced to make these snap decisions... Uh, that that term art from adversity is so yep. appropriate because some of the mm -hmm. best stuff that has ever been produced wasn't just accidental. Given, yes, it wasn't given or, the absolute metric ton of time to meander and, and and consult and get all these opinions on stuff. No, it was made with snap decisions that just feel like the right thing at the time to do. And this is the perfect example of that. Because I think in that interview, he 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 said that there was other rappers there that were like much more well known. And he, I think in the interview that I read, like he even said a few names I was familiar with, like Maestro Fresh West is like a Toronto based rapper and a few others. And they're like, they they didn't get picked and they they just, I guess, responded to like my rhythm and my flow or whatever. And I, I don't know. They never told me expressly why, like you said. But he, yeah, he was just called in and then yeah. just we'll just see you in the sound booth in two days. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> um, so I, I do like when they they came out with Third Strike Online Edition. We'll never stop talking about how great Third Strike Online Edition oh, yeah. is. Let's let's ha let's have somebody else. Like I, I, I'm sorry, I forget the name of the the new rapper that they had redo the music. But like it's still like the same sort of 
feel to it like all the the we were just singing it before we started our my sync test was knock you out 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 knock yeah. you out like it that 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 trailer that was like another big fighting game trailer just like the mortal Kombat 11 story one with the movie theme like that got me so yeah hyped. Some, you, some you, people, you have it yeah. for an intro some people don't like knock you out as much as the old music i think it's yeah, great that's, man that's like, valid good. like resurrection good, you know what they say like there's some great <laughs> beats and moments in that song that i'm like this is awesome man shut the hell up you stupid <laughs> bitch like I, I i think i think it's genuinely good and it, it really captures the feel with like a modern like well, not a modern but like a 2010s take on you know street fighter like you know urban like sort of music which is great because that's that's still the identity that they carried into online edition which is you know the whole thing that makes street fighter 3 street fighter 3 yeah and they had all those remixes in the game but there were they were toggle uh toggleable mm -hmm. you could get the the original soundtracks too which is again another awesome thing that uh third strike online edition does Yeah, people don't realize and this is this is unfortunate but uh, how goddamn crunchy and how rough audio was on CPS3 games. CPS3 mm -hmm. really put its forefront all into visuals, and they right. really didn't have a lot of space for audio. So when you listen to the actual Fightcade version, which is the arcade version of Street Fighter 3 Third Strike, woof, like it sounds rough, man. And the only reason I know that it sounds rough is that I put more time into online edition and they remastered all the audio in the game like all the characters voices all the sound effects all the music like everything is super remastered and it sounds amazing and it's i go back to the arcade version like i'm like what the fuck Sound that, but it can't sound that bad it's dude oh I, trust it, me like it, once you have perspective I, I think it is once you actually yeah. have the perspective and listening to the audio in online edition for so many years and i now that like the main way to play the game is fight Cade, it's it's really rough man they did a lot for the audio of that game which is why i have to like eventually bribe somebody at capcom just to like dump that iso and just let xbox have it and just make it playable on xbox one games pass like you know puzzle fighter and stuff like that so we can actually play the best version of third strike there is mm, yeah Woof. do they it, so for <laughs> So for 30th anniversary edition, did they remaster the audio in no, that one to match it? Not at so all. So still the arcade. That's, that's just arcade ROMs. Oh, uh, okay. not at all. I thought they, I thought they would maybe fix it there no. somehow. No, well, that was that was the big disappointing part was that they were all pitching that 30th anniversary is going to be the remastered, better sounding, better looking version, like of of Street Fighter Three Third Strike, and it had none of the huge improvements that Third Strike Online Edition had. Ones that Iron Galaxy yeah, put a ton of time into. Hmm. Bummer. That's unfortunate. That's unfortunate right there. Uh, and, and what about uh, Dragon Ball music? Because I feel like a lot of Dragon Ball fighting games, the only things I could think about is the intro. The intro music you mean for the opening. The, yeah, you mean like all the anime style style yeah, intros and stuff? Like the yeah. yeah, the openings is what I noticed. But like gameplay wise, I never think about it. Like I don't even know what DBFZ's in-game like stage music really is it's besides the character select screen yeah it, it's, it's yeah. got like this identity but it, it's very much made by you know the arc system works sound team uh mm -hmm. it's good like dragon ball's got some hype music and it there's there's some great tracks a lot of not a lot of it has a ton of identity a lot of it's very like da -da 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 -da. <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, it's so a lot the of anime shit music like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh but it, it is it is good like it feels like on on a, on a similar level as like guilty gear xard you know Hmm, right okay do we want to finish off with what someone's favorite track just singular track or maybe Ooh, just album that's too hard like, that's a what a track or album singular track and even singular album I, I think well by album you mean like which fighting game has the best soundtrack music? yeah yeah this is gonna boil down to what everyone thinks it's gonna boil down to for me and Matt, <laughs> most likely like this is just the the nature of the okay. situation Okay, how about you do like favorite one, then you do like underrated, like my un my favorite underrated one, like you might not expect, like you know, uh, the first and then like a runner up maybe. Sure. Just to give some variance to it. Sure. <laughs> Max is like KI 2013 and then KI 2013 <laughs> again. Sure. Um, yeah, for me, it's obviously Killer Instinct. Uh, 
modern ki right it's mm -hmm. it's the and not it isn't just what mick gordon did with the music of ki it's also what the 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 follow-up artists did because he wasn't they weren't able to get him for season three and beyond yeah and that music's still incredible and carries like the same punch and the same hype as the previous ki tracks i think it was uh cell dweller and um i always forget the other um, artist yeah name. but yes two like, guys that's the perfect example of uh of perfect fighting game music and it's not just the fact oh the tracks are good like no like the the tracks that you hear on the you know the compositions that are available on spotify or whatnot are specifically just made for that like the in-game mm -hmm. music is a bunch of just stems and strings and things that that shove all this combat together and literally the music comes together from gameplay you only get certain things if you hit certain enders music changes if you get combo breakers like the fact that the music is so integrated into gameplay more than it ever has before where it's like oh yeah you have like a near death theme you have the main theme you have a round two theme like yeah that's very nice right the, the ki's music goes so far beyond that where it's like they put way too much effort into this like for a, for a little budget game like they went so ham it was ridiculous and then there's also musical ultras you know on top mm -hmm. of that so obviously ki like it's this the most beloved combination of badass fighting game music makes you hyped as fuck like and and also is directly tied to gameplay yeah but I'd, I'd say another one that's right below it um is honestly probably old school guilty gear x right and that's the only other time okay. that i can give it just a huge nod where they built into the game built under the theme of the story built into all that stuff like we mentioned before and it's not even like a a lower note than ki it's on the same level and it's obviously something everybody knows but do those i can't help it man i've listened to that soundtrack so much in the early 2000s and even recently got introduced to guilty gear korean versions of the music oh, and I, korean, yeah. I finally found really? out what this one track was it was just kai's theme listen to guilty matt if you've never heard this before guilty gear korean soundtrack kai's theme it'll blow your fucking mind it's so goddamn cool and it and i realized like i've heard this song before it was used in combo videos for years oh, in the okay. old 2000s and i never knew where it came from i thought it was like a Mega Man theme or something like that it is so sick uh it's honestly one of the most hype fighting game soundtracks uh themes i've ever heard okay justin what's what's yours Man, so I'm a huge fan of like superhero themes, like very like makes me feel like I can do this type of thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, so the funniest part, my favorite uh, theme that really sounds like a superhero theme, it's it's definitely very random, but Street Fighter Five Zangief makes me feel like a freaking darn superhero. It's kind really? of really why do you know how it goes? It it's like dan 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 dan. So but it's like. It okay. it really sounds like, like uh, I don't know. It's it sounds like he's Superman. Like it really does sound like. A yeah, I thought Superman you were gonna say Captain theme. America or something. Yeah. So the craziest part or is Storm. that I do I I do love. Not Storm doesn't have superhero music actually. Okay. She's, she's very she's very jazzy. Okay. She's definitely very jazzy and very calm. But like Zangi for Street Fighter Five for some reason, I don't. Know, I spent at least one week just had that on repeat for like literally whole days and. I just love the crap out of that song in particular. I don't know why, because like usually uh, old school Zangief themes, they're they're not as very like pumped up superhero theme. But for yeah, some they're reason, a little Street bit Fighter, more laid back. Yeah, but for some reason, Street Fighter Five version of Zangief, they 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 kind of made it really really nice. Uh, so I appreciate that one. Um, I think a very underrated one um, that people don't really, I guess, listen to too much. I would say. Um, Tekken 5 DR, uh, the Ice Castle. The Ice Castle one, that one is really good. Okay, I don't know that one off the top of my head. Yeah, because everyone talks about Moonlit Wilderness. Moonlit Wilderness. Right? <laughs> Obviously, Moonlit Wilderness is, is, is the GOAT. But the but Frozen Temple for, for Tekken 5 DR, uh, which is it's a new stage. It was a DR. They added in DR. I think that's like Lily stage or something. Okay. Uh, but that one is really darn good. Yeah. I don't know uh, that one. Uh, for me, like, yeah, it's, it's KI 2013, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> I, I, if before that though, like before that game came out, like I'd say probably third strikes general soundtrack to mm -hmm. me was like kind of the goat. Um, but things have kind of shifted since then. So when I really think back as much as I like third strike, if there's something aside from, from, um, KI 2013, I'd actually go back to Tekken 3 specifically. Yeah. And I just mm -hmm. think about my memories of it 
and like the nostalgia I feel from that. But when I actually went back, I don't know, like a couple months ago, like, let me listen to some of these tracks. Let me find any like uh, different arrangements and whatever. And like, they're still all so good. And, yeah. you know, it's not even uh, um, games where like, I, I like this particular character that much or I played them, but I love their music. And that's like a really good thing because a character that you associate with obviously links you up to that music a bit better and you're inclined to like it a bit more but like you know i don't play lei wulong in tekken games but lei wulong's theme is super <laughs> sick in that game uh paul's music is sick like everyone's music is is super awesome tekken has such a great history of music man mm -hmm. like it, it it is such a bummer that the pc version of that game doesn't have you know the jukebox that only the, the tekken 7 that only the console version has on playstation oh, I'm like, oh I, didn't, sucks, I didn't realize dude. it wasn't in the pc version yeah because there, there's tekken 7 themes are obviously really really damn good and then there's some mm -hmm. like wah, wah, wah. like there's some terrible shit in there too <laughs> but wah, i just wah. i just want to say that sounds like rufus's fountain. theme i just want to say electric fountain on all that shit man like there's some no. banger songs from tekken's history yeah i mean you could you could probably get married to to moonlit wilderness like have that be like when the bride comes down just play da, na, da, na. that'd be awesome dude the, the school theme from tekken tag like all of that oh stuff, that dude. one's good yeah. dude like i love it or yeah, Tekken Tag Two was good. Was good. Was Tekken Tag Two music good? Yes, it was, it, they carried yeah, a lot yeah. of Tekken Tag music and did new versions of it. Okay. Yeah. Or if your wife's coming down the the, uh, the altar, you can play the Tekken Five theme. Like I'm here now, doing <laughs> that'd be perfect, Max. Yes. I'll, I'll, I'll plan that when I get my vows redone. Yes, that's a good idea. <laughs> I'm here now. <laughs> They're playing like Felicia versus Bishamon. And if Bishamon ends with a certain move, you just cut Felicia in half. Did you make sure to see Orchid's thong? Yeah. Here's 30 more chances as she spins around. See, Don't... you've got the Batgirl shirt on and you're wearing a Robin t-shirt. Batgirl and Robin to your Batman. And Turtles ha is like Star Wars in the like, Star Wars is a 70s thing that ran into the 80s. Yeah. Turtles started in the 80s, but really grew in the 90s. Yeah.